Luke, the first chapter, beginning at verse 26 and reading through verse 37, and the King James text today reads, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in under her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. Amen. I want to talk to us today on the topic, God can. Amen. God can. If you'll bow your heads with me another moment this afternoon. Father, once again, God, we are so grateful for this time of worship, for the opportunity we have as the people of God to come together in spirit, if not in body. Lord, that we might bring honor and glory to the name of our God, our Savior, our King, our Redeemer, and most of all, our friend the Lord Jesus Christ. Master, the Word of God is so important. It is so vital to our lives today. It is so vital to our spirit. Lord, if ever there has been a time in human history when the people of God need to hear a word from God, this indeed is the time. We need today, O oh God, for you to speak to your people. We don't need the thoughts of men. We don't need doctrines of men. We don't need man-made and contrived dogma. But we need today, O oh God, to hear from heaven that our soul might be fed, that our faith might be increased. Master, in the name of Jesus, this is only possible through the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I've been preaching a long time, God. Many, many, many years, decades even. And never have I lost sight of the reality that without the anointing, I am but a tinkling cymbal. I'm an empty sounding trumpet. But Master, with the anointing, the Word of God is able to flow through me that the people of God might benefit and receive thereby. Master, we lift up today this special prayer request that I saw on Facebook. Uh, our friend Eric has a buddy that is in the hospital right now, only in his 20s, suffering with cancer, late stage cancer. 
God, you're a miracle worker. I've been delivered from the jaws of death myself by the miraculous hand of God. And Lord, I don't know this young man. I don't need to know this young man. But we lift him up to you right now, God. And we ask that you would touch his body. Do what no doctor can do. Do what science is incapable of doing. And Lord, today we will be certain to give you the praise, the glory, the recognition for this miraculous thing. Master, today we ask all these things in none other than Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Praise God and amen. God can. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord told the people of Israel in ancient times that they were to repeat and to rehearse, the language he uses is rehearse, the miracles that brought the people of God out of Egypt in the hearing of their children over and over again. Now, I don't know about you, but I know some people. I won't say their names. I'll just look their way and whistle. Uh, who can't stand repetition. They just get tired of hearing the same thing over and over again. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, I used to roll my eyes sometimes when my grandfather would tell the stories of miracles that God gave him throughout the course of his life. My grandpa loved to tell the story of how God healed his knee when he put an axe head through the uh, right in through his knee and he went to the doctor and they told him he was going to miss months of work and he said I've got 10 children I can't be out of work for that length of time and he went to brother Tatlock's house and uh, brother Tatlock was a mighty marvelous man of faith and an incredible man of God and uh, he told Brother Tatlock as late at night, he said, Brother, I need God to touch me because I can't be out of work for weeks on end. And he said they sat down to tea and cookies, which was kind of a late night tradition Brother Tatlock and his wife Jean had. And he said they were just talking and talking. He said all of a sudden, Brother Tatlock, without saying a word, Brother Tatlock reached over, put his hand on my grandfather's knee, and he prayed a little prayer, didn't say but a few words, said, Lord... Uh, this man has a family. He needs to support his family. He can't be out of work. Heal him, God, right now in the name of Jesus. And Grandpa said he felt the power of God touch him. He said, I pulled my knee up. said, up till then, I couldn't bend my knee. He said, I pulled my knee up under the table, and we just kept visiting. He said, I went the next day back to the shop doctor, and the shop doctor took the bandage off my knee and was stunned. He said, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. And he said, this is impossible. This is impossible. Oh, I love, I love when there are things going on that are impossible. Because everything that is impossible for man, everything that appears impossible in your life, everything that would seem to be impossible in our world today, God can. Hallelujah. It may be impossible for you or I to do it. It may be impossible for the doctor to do it. It. it may be impossible for science to do it. Oh, but hallelujah. With God, the angel of the Lord told Mary, nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. During this visit with Mary, announcing God's plan concerning the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, there are two impossible items mentioned. First, we hear that Mary, who is a virgin, who acknowledges to the angel, I don't know how in the world you're planning on all this stuff happening that you're talking about, because I've never known a man. I've never been sexually with a man. And the way I understand things to work, <laughs> uh, a woman's got to lay down with a man in order to become pregnant. Said, I don't know how you're planning on that happen. You see, in the realms of nature, in the realms of science, what this angel was talking about was impossible. Hallelujah. 
Oh, but the angel said, oh, listen, when God has a plan, oh, hallelujah, it's all right if I get Pentecostal on you a little bit today, because I'm going to shout a little, I'm going to get happy a little, amen. When God has a plan, God has a way. Glory to God. When God has a plan, you better know he's got a way of getting it done. Glory to amen. God, amen. Whew. Then he tells this little girl, Mary, says, as a matter of fact, if you think a virgin conceiving is such an impossibility, he said, let me encourage your faith a little bit. Let me inspire you a little bit. He said, you know your cousin Elizabeth, she's an old woman now. She and her husband have gone all these years without a child, and she's been recognized as being barren, incapable of carrying a child. Say, well, I got news for you, honey. She's six months pregnant. Glory to God. Even right now, she is six months. But wait a minute, angel. You don't understand. That's impossible. Why? We're not living in the 21st century with artificial insemination. We're not living in the 21st century where science is able to accomplish things that have not been able to be done for centuries regarding women having children who otherwise would not be able to have children. We don't have fertility clinics. We don't have fertility doctors. Mary, what's impossible with men is possible with God. Hallelujah. For with God, nothing is impossible impossible. When you say I can't, that's all right, honey. The answer you need to remember is God can. Amen. I was talking about repetition a moment ago and I'm going to finish that thought. Amen. You see, every once in a while, the church needs to be reminded of things that we ought to know, that we ought to understand. Things that are so simple, that are so primary, that are so basic, and yet we have a terrible habit as human beings of forgetting some simple truths. And when God told the children of Israel, repeat these things, rehearse these things in the hearing of your children, He said so because... Not that they would necessarily forget that these things ever happen, but at different times in their lives, they would come upon obstacles and they would come upon circumstances that were going to test their faith, that was going to cause them anxiety and fear and panic, and they wouldn't know what they were going to do or how they were going to do it, and they were suddenly going to find themselves saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. And God said, just remind them of what I've done. Remind them that God can. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what you can do. It doesn't matter what you're capable of. It doesn't matter what the doctor says. It doesn't matter what the judge says. It doesn't matter what the attorney says. What matters is what God says. Because if God says it, it is so. Hallelujah. Lord. There's an old song we used to sing, the answer's on the way, this I know. Jesus said it, I believe it, and it's so. Hallelujah. Oh, if God said it, then He has a way of doing it. Glory to God. Amen. We need to be reminded every once in a while. You see, some people don't understand that the fivefold ministry listed in the Word of God, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers, they don't understand that the ministry of a pastor is different than the ministry of an evangelist. When I go in to preach for another pastor in another church, I'm there to preach as an evangelist. I'm not there, I'm not their pastor. I'm an evangelist. I'm a visiting preacher. When an evangelist comes into the sanctuary when he comes into the fellowship of God's people, it is their job to encourage and to inspire and to uplift. That is the work of an evangelist. An evangelist 
has a very simple task. Basically, an evangelist comes through in order to remind us, hallelujah, to repeat. A lot of times you'll hear evangelists saying things that you've heard a thousand times before. He'll be, in, he'll be saying things to inspire you, to get you charged up, to get you fired up. And he is there to repeat and to rehearse in your hearing truths that uh, you haven't altogether forgotten, but you've misplaced them. Amen. But right now you need them. Amen. Right now in our country, right now in our world, if ever, there has been a time when God's people need rehearsed and repeated in our hearing this simple truth. Now is the time. Amen. With everything going on, with the wickedness that is coursing through our nation, with the evil that is at the top of our government at this hour, with the deception, the deceit, the lying spirit that has taken over so many in the church world today. We need to be reminded when we look toward heaven and say, Lord, I can't I can't do anything about this mess. I don't have the power. People who have the power aren't even doing anything. People that have the ability, of course they're not because they're complicit. But God is there to remind you, yeah, you can't do a thing, but I can. Hallelujah. And today my job is simply this, to remind you that God can. Hallelujah. If God can place a child, an embryo in the womb of Mary, then I've got news for you. There isn't a thing in the world you need God to do today that God can't do. Brother, I need groceries. I need money to pay my rent. Uh, I need a job. I need help. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't do anything. No, you don't have to do anything. God can. Hallelujah. I say, I can't do anything. That's all right, because God can do everything. I remember years ago, one of my greatest uh, mentors in ministry that I ever had, and I am so grateful every day I am grateful for this man. Brother J.T. Gillum, pastor of the Riverside Church of God in Fort Worth, Texas. He has passed on, gone to his reward. But Brother Gillum told me many, many years ago, he gave me so much good, godly, wise advice. And one of the best pieces of advice that God ever gave, uh, that Brother Gillum ever gave me, he said, Chuck, just remember this, son. There ain't nothing you can do that God can't do better. Hallelujah. There is a nothing you can do that God can't do better. He was talking to me about church services and when the Spirit of God begins to move through a Pentecostal church and people start getting happy and shouting and dancing and rejoicing in the Holy Ghost and getting in the Spirit and interceding one for another he said, listen, when God starts to move in the church, uh, you don't need to stick with the program. You don't need to stay with uh, your program. He said, when God is moving, it's time to get out of God's way and let Him do what He's doing. He said, there ain't a thing in the world you can do in that service that is going to be better than what God can do. Hello now. I want to tell you folks, when you think that you're at the end of your rope, when you think that you have passed all possibility, I'm here to tell you today, God can. Hallelujah. Whatever your circumstance, whatever your situation today, know this, God can. Let me take my jacket off this afternoon starting to get a little overheated and I don't want to pass out up here. That would not be a good look. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Our faith or our lack of faith is demonstrated through our fears, our anxieties, and oftentimes panic. The more we believe God is able, then the less we are likely to lament over that 
which we are incapable of doing. Some people worry when they cannot convince their neighbor to be saved or their unsaved loved one to come back to the Lord. I know people, bless her heart, my grandmother was one of them. I'll tell you what. She'd be, oh, you know, I've tried to reach out to so-and-so. I've tried to convince my wayward daughter, my backslid child, to come back to God. I've tried to witness to my neighbor and convince them to trust the Lord for salvation and to obey the gospel. But try as I might, they just aren't biting. They just aren't doing it, you know. And uh, I've got family members today that are backslid. And I've got family members today who are claiming that they're embracing uh, uh, atheism and this sort of thing. And oh, I'm going to tell you, some people be running around like a chicken with their head chopped off. Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying to reach this person. And every time they see that person, every time they're with that person, they start preaching at them. They start going after them, you know. And sometimes, as a matter of fact, I'd be there, and they'd start preaching at them and all that. And uh, I'd kind of get them and pull them off to the side and get them away from all that mess. Oh, Pastor, why, wow, that's just the devil. You're just interfering with God. No, I'm not interfering with God. I'm interfering with the dingling who doesn't know how to shut up and let God do it. Hello now. Oh, but I, I'm trying to reach this person. I'm trying to convince this person. Honey, there ain't nothing you can do that God can't do better. That's right. There is nothing you can do that God can't do better. When you're panicking over a lost loved one, when you're panicking over a lost neighbor or friend, when you're panicking over a backslid son or daughter, my friend, i got news for you. You've lost sight of the fact that God can. I can't reach him, but God can. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to tell you, Tommy talks about, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to embarrass him and I'm not trying to share his laundry out in public. I don't think I'm doing this with this statement, but I might be wrong and he'll want to shoot me later, but that's all right. You know, he says every time, sometimes he goes to his parents' house and they want to start getting after him about this organization that he grew up in. And unfortunately, this is one of the things that's discouraged him from even trying to go visit his parents as often as he might otherwise like. And I'm going to tell you, this old preacher, I'm family oriented. And it's weird because I come from one of the most dysfunctional, screwed up bunch of people that ever walked the planet Earth. And as messed up and as screwed up and as goofy as some of my family members are, I've always believed in family, and family's always been important to me, and Tommy could tell you that I'm constantly encouraging him. You know, why don't you go see your grandmother in East Texas? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Why don't you go see your folks? And he'll be all, well, you know, every time I go, they start preaching at me, and they're trying to talk to me about this and so and blah, blah, blah. And I understand that. And the sad part of it is, uh, if they had a grasp and understanding of what I'm talking about right now, they wouldn't do that. Because sometimes when you're trying to reach out to people and you're trying to pull them in, in the process you're in fact pushing them away. So the smartest thing you can do is let God do it. Hallelujah. Let God do it. Let go as the old saying goes and let God. Hallelujah. There ain't nothing in the world you can do that God can't do better. So instead of pushing people away, we need to learn to trust God. We need to acknowledge God's ability to do what seems to be impossible. It is not impossible. Hallelujah. It may be impossible for us today, but it is not impossible with God. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Matthew 17, 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith 
as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Hallelujah. That is the promise of God's Word. If you can find even the smallest bit of faith. You don't need to find a whole lot of faith. I'm going to tell you, I've been preaching a lot of years. And it never ceases to amaze me. When I was preaching evangelistically, I'd go into a church and I'd be preaching something, and all of a sudden, somebody in the audience, somebody in the congregation would jump up and just start to shout and dance and holler all over the church. And I mean, and everybody else is sitting there looking at them. But you know what just happened? I'm going to tell you what just happened. An issue in their life that they've been struggling with, it might have been for months, it might have been for years, it might have been for decades. Something they've really been struggling with. And it's been very hard for them to find the faith to trust God and let God have it, let God take care of it. All of a sudden what would happen is I would say something in my preaching. Now this isn't just me, this happens to many preachers, you know. But the preacher will say something and all of a sudden it just unlocks something in their brain and in their heart and in their spirit. And all of a sudden that little tiny mustard seed faith drops into their spirit because all at once they get it. Suddenly it hits them. And my God, the Spirit of the Lord touches their soul. They jump up, start shouting. They're celebrating the victory. Now they're celebrating that God's already done it and it ain't even done. But what's happened is they finally have laid hold on the reality. If God's got a plan, God's got a way. Hallelujah. What you can't do, God says, I can do. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden in their spirit, they get this. And that's when you see them start to dance and shout and celebrate in the house of God. Because that literally is in the spirit. That is celebrating a victory that has not yet been realized. Maybe they've been trying to believe God for their child who's addicted to drugs. Maybe they've been trying to believe God for deliverance from an opioid addiction. Maybe they've been trying to believe God for deliverance from alcohol addiction. It's amazing how many things in this life we can struggle with and struggle with and struggle with, sometimes for months and years and decades, and we struggle and we struggle. And the only reason we're struggling at all is because we have not gotten this truth down in our spirit. God can. Pastor, I can't seem to get a grip on my addiction. I cannot seem to get a grip on my drinking habits. I cannot seem to get a grip on my cigarette smoking. Honey, God can. Can. And the minute you understand that God can, oh, I'm going to tell you what God does. God will. Hallelujah. The minute you understand God can, you will realize what you're believing God for. But there's such a struggle that goes on with us sometimes. As long as you want to believe that your trouble and your struggle is bigger than God, then honey, you're never going to understand that your help is just a quarter inch away from you. The biggest problems we as believers have is we allow the enemy to magnify things in our vision and to convince us that things in our lives are bigger than God. And when something looks like it's bigger than God, that's the time we need to turn around and look at the devil and say, Devil, I can't, but God can. Hallelujah. I can't lick my alcohol addiction, but God can. I can't lick my opioid addiction, but God can. I can't deliver my child from their drug addiction or their alcoholism, but God can. Hallelujah. Yes. I remember years and years ago, 
many, many years ago. I, I'm trying to remember how old I would have been. Uh, I wish my cousin Don was watching today. He may be, I don't know. But many years ago, he was about, I think, two or so. And he had developed this sty in his eye, right up in the corner of his eye. And it was protruding from his eye, and it looked terrible, you know. And his parents took him to the doctors, and they did all kinds of tests and stuff. Well, they found out he had a tumor behind his eyeball. And this tumor was going to require that they remove his entire eyeball, the socket, everything. Well, I came home, I believe, from school one day. I'll never forget it as long as I live. My mother was down in the washroom at our house in Connecticut, where I grew up. Mom, you might remember, was over there on Burton Road. You were in the washroom, which was also the furnace room. And... Uh, She said, CJ, come here a minute, I've got something to tell you. And I went in there, and she said, and she was crying, she was upset. She said, Don Boy has cancer, he has a tumor. The doctor said they're going to have to remove his entire eyeball, the socket, everything. And uh, she said, you know, uh, obviously Don and Pam, his parents, were very upset. And I looked at her. See, I was coming at it from a different place than she would. Now, I'm not, I'm not accusing her of not having faith or anything like that. But see, at that moment, she, she had allowed the notion that this thing was bigger than God to kind of overtake her. But that's why we need the church. That's why we need each other. You'd be amazed how many times God's people will talk to one another or will uh, fellowship with one another, and one is able to say something or do something for the other that unlocks faith and, you know, releases the miracle in their life that they need. We need each other. We need the church. And I looked at my mother. I said, Mom, don't be so upset. God is still able. God is still on the throne. And I went and I began to pray about it. Well, I was the children's church director in my church at that time. That's right. I was the children's church director. Now, now I think about it, that gives me a, an idea of how old I was. I had to have been at least 12 because I started directing the children's church when I was 12 and I stopped when I was 16. So I'm somewhere between 12 and 16. <clears throat> and what we used to do in our children's church was... Uh, we set our little area up in the basement of the church like a church. We set our chairs up in two, you know, rows and all this. And we actually had quite a lot of kids in our children's church. We, we had a hundred or better kids in our children's church. And I would literally ask kids to serve as the ushers. And we literally just imitated church upstairs is basically what we did. And then I would... Uh, we'd sing our little Sunday school songs, you know, we'd sing our songs and all that. And then I would, uh, in a way, I guess you might, I'd give a lesson, you know, I wouldn't preach at them so much, but I'd give a Bible lesson and all that. Well, this one day, I said, you know, I said, uh, my little cousin has fallen real sick. No, he, he wasn't two either. He was older than that. Anyway, because my children's church was between five and uh, twelve. Oh, I'm telling you, as you get older, remembering details is a nightmare sometimes. Anyway, I said, my little cousin, you know, he's got this issue and he needs God to touch him. And I asked him to come up and he came up and we anointed him with oil. We literally kept oil, just like they did upstairs in church. And I anointed him with oil, and I laid hands on him, and we prayed for him. Well, it wasn't but about a week or so later that he was due to go in for the surgery to remove everything, his eye socket, everything. And uh, this was the first bout he had with this. And uh, they were going to do some preliminary work to... Uh, determine exactly where the cancer was and what needed to be taken out and all this. And he had to go in for tests and all this. And uh, mom and dad brought him in there. 
and they did all this preliminary work, and they came back and they said, it's gone. We cannot find it. It is gone. This issue has resolved itself, and we don't know how. Amen. You know why? Because when science can't, God can. Hallelujah. When doctors can't, God can. And I'm here to tell you that when you get it in your head that God can, God will. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Amen. The Word of God tells us in the story of Jesus healing two blind men in Matthew 9 verses 27 through 30. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed Him crying and saying, Thou Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus saith unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. Oh, I want to tell you, the Lord is standing beside you today. He's as close as the mention of his name. And he's saying to you simply this, Believe ye that I can do this. Hallelujah. I'm not asking you if you can do it. God isn't interested in whether or not you think you've got the strength. God isn't interested in whether or not you think you've got the answer. God isn't interested in whether or not you think that you've got a way. God's interested in knowing whether or not you believe He can. Hallelujah. And those blind men, now, I'm going to tell you, in biblical times, they didn't have science. They didn't have eye transplants. They didn't have ophthalmologists and specialists. So, honey, if you were blind, there's, uh, the, the, everything said you're going to stay blind. There was no way that was going to reverse itself. But the, the Lord asked them, do you believe that I am able to do this? Amen. And they responded and said, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, man can't do anything about this, can they? No, Lord, but I can. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, every once in a while, we need to be reminded that God can. Oh, my God, all we have to do is trust Him. All we have to do is believe. All we have to do is lay hold of this truth. In John chapter 11, verses 20 through 23, we read the story of Lazarus who has died. And the Word of God said, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met Him. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if Thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever Thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Hallelujah. Oh, why? Because Martha understood something. Oh, when I can't, God can. Hallelujah. Martha understood that. Said, Oh, Lord, I know even now. Oh, hallelujah. See, we lose sight of the fact that Martha had that monochrome of faith. She had that little, uh, just that little drop, just that little mustard seed of faith. She said, Lord, I know. Now, she didn't know what the Lord was going to do or how He was going to do it. She said, all I know is that you're able to do things that nobody else can do. And I know that even now, anything you ask the Father, anything you pray for, is going to happen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to tell you, if we would come to God with that mindset, if we would come to God with that uh, attitude, every time we faced a circumstance in a situation that appeared to be bigger than we are, 
that appeared to be beyond our abilities. If we would come to God with that mindset, Lord, I know that even now, hallelujah, even now. I'm going to tell you something. You know, we're in a situation right now, I've talked about this many times in the past. I believe our nation is literally on the verge of civil war. I've talked about this many times. I'm very concerned about civil unrest breaking out and things like this. God has shown me such things in recent years. And uh, I know it's coming. I know it's going to happen at some point. I just don't know when. I don't know how. I don't know, you know. And uh, it's beyond my control. Well, right now, I am living with any number of health issues. I'm on medication for a number of things. I've got to deal with uh, having been diagnosed with cancer, with leukemia. I've got... Uh, Supposed to have sugar diabetes, but somehow or another, God seems to have touched that, and I haven't had to take uh, insulin now since January. And uh, I've got, you know, thyroid issues. And man, when uh, I was off the medication for my thyroid, you got to remember, folks, a lot of this stuff is just a byproduct of getting older. And I'm going to tell you, if you think God's going to deliver you from everything has to do with getting older, you're out of your mind. You know, as you get older, your eyesight fails. As you get older, your hearing starts to wither. As you get older, your skin gets wrinkly. You know, some people act like that God is a genie in a bottle and everything that comes into their life that they don't like, God is going to heal. God is going to deliver. God is going to save them from. Well, I've got news for you, honey. Uh, no, no, because... Uh, it's natural that certain things, you know, it's a heredity is natural. Things come into our life. I've got all kinds of different health issues and all kinds of things that I take pills for and medications for these days. And if things were to get really haywire and go crazy, it could literally affect my ability to get my medications. It could affect my ability to access the things I need to fight these uh, issues in my life. Does that thought bring me fear? Does it bring me anxiety? Does it cause me to panic? No. Because I know that when I'm in a situation where I can't, God can. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about it. You know, I'm going to tell you, God has been at my back. He has watched my back for so long now. There are so many times in the last 30 years or so, there are so many times that my life should have ended, but it didn't. I've had doctors, I don't know how many times I've had doctors look at me and say, I don't even know how you survived this. They told me this. Uh, after I went through uh, a battle with uh, pneumonia and a parasite in my gut back in 2000, and my doctor said, I, I have no clue how to advise you from this day forward because I have never in my entire life seen anyone survive what you just came through. You see... What we can't do naturally, God can do supernaturally. Amen. God has watched my back, Tommy. He's been there for me. The Lord has delivered me. I don't worry about things I can't control because I know when I'm in a situation where I can't control things, God can. Oh, I'm going to tell you, God can. I'm not going to sit here and worry and fret about things that I have no power over because God can. Glory to God. Amen. The Word of God tells us today, lastly, the fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Hallelujah. Did you hear me? The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Glory to God. The angel told Mary, listen Mary, you're going to have a baby. Your virginity is not going to prevent God from making this thing happen. As a matter of fact, Mary, your cousin 
is already, Elizabeth right now is already pregnant. She's an old woman. She's never had a baby. She was determined. She was barren. But even now, she is six months pregnant. I believe part of the reason God may have done that was to encourage Mary a little bit and help her realize, listen, if God can do that for Elizabeth, then He can do what He's promised and He was going to do through me. Amen. Oh, I'm going to tell you, sometimes God will do things just to remind us that I'm able, just to remind us that He is capable. Lastly, in closing today, I'll remind you with the words of Jesus. Now the angel said, for with God nothing shall be impossible. But in Matthew 19, in verse 26, I believe it is. Yes. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Glory to God. When you've reached the end of your rope and you've determined, Lord, I can't handle this. I can't do this. I can't conquer this. I can't get delivered from this. I'm stuck in this spot. Everything that's happening right now is bigger than me. And it's beyond my capability. Oh, be reminded this afternoon, God can. Hallelujah. God can. Just because it's bigger than you doesn't mean it's bigger than God. Amen. God can. Hallelujah. Which is heaven.